Do you plan on changing that or adding upgrades like that? And uh, go ahead and finish. Sorry. And if your excuse is like all the, the, the fun, clever pets, I'd have to argue that archaeology is getting dangerously close to giving me more weapons and more fun pets than engineering. Um, well, <laughs> it's, I would, if, in answer to the question of what happened is uh, probably an over, well, so there was the reaction to engineering sucks, which was the explosion of awesomeness, and then there was the reaction to over, engineering is too good, and so it, it's been doing a, a bit of a pendulum swing there. Um, Again, just we really uh, we really want to nail down our philosophy on that particular trade skill, which is you know c could be his own class if we let it get away from us. Um, and so you know we we're, we are going to focus on that and uh, and make sure it offers a, a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, sorry, to, you know I don't have I don't want to give away any examples right now because so many of them require complicated tech that may or may not happen, um, but. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, there's a, there's going to be a lot of focus on it this time. So, uh, your concerns have been heard, uh, you know, and certainly if you guys have any any things you anything you really want to see, you should tell us. You know, get on the forums and 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 make that giant post again. Can't believe I just said that. I'm not sure how happy I am about that. Thank you. All right, so um. First of all, thank you very much for that uh, priest talent that lets me swap my health percentage with one of my allies. I look forward to using that to kill my guildmaster many, many times. Um, you haven't already killed him with Leap of Faith? What? You haven't already killed him over and over with Leap of Faith? Oh, well, yeah, but I mean, now I have a new way to do it. Um, I don't think he'll be in your guild for long. <laughs> If he was going to kick me for it, he'd have done it by now. Um, so for the actual question, um, how is monk healing going to work? Because when I was playing over over there yesterday, you had chi, which is basically energy. Then you had light and dark power, which is basically holy power. And then looking at the character sheet, it's like intellect. This stat does nothing for you. Spirit. This stat does nothing for you. So is it going to be like I choose the healing spec and I get a mana bar and I start using intellect leather? Or would I heal with agility leather, or would it be like I use intellect leather, but I still have chi and dark and light power? How, how is that going to work? It'll, pro it'll, it'll probably work where when you go into the healer's stance, uh, your key will change to mana, and you'll use mana for your healing spells, and your bar will, your bar will change, similar to how like a druid does or a warrior. Um, on the question of how will healing work, <clears throat> the two challenges we put for ourselves for the healer monk is, let's try to make healing to where they can DPS, similar kind of like the Disc Priest with Atonement. And also, what if majority of their healing spells, they don't have to target anything? Because traditionally, with all healer specs, what you do is you have your grid or whatever, and you're clicking the dude and healing him or whatever. What if the monk was more kind of proximity, like I'm up near the dude and I heal him that way? And it's kind of like, maybe it's like, kind of like Holy Nova, but more single target and a lot stronger. And so the current pitch is that you're incredibly mobile as a healer, and you're in proximity of all the people you're healing, and yeah, you're just zipping around a raid, healing, and then you can also DPS uh, the boss. And you also have this mechanic where you have these statues, and you can pre-place the statues around the raid, and anytime you DPS the boss, the statues emit healing near them. So there's gameplay of like, okay, I wanna have my statue, you know, near all the melee or near the range and stuff like that so we're definitely challenging ourselves to trying to deliver a different type of healer than what we've done before that, uh, thank that you. sounds pretty awesome thank you hi my question is about uh levels the level 90 shaman talents uh you have a cooldown based t uh talent in the uh well, the elemental harmony, where that's you can put down three fire totems at once. That would be a huge DPS increase. The uh, canceling of totems that would be great for uh, resto and uh, the 
Elemental Harmony probably yeah. was not going to apply to Fire Totems. That was not something that was, that was clarified in the tooltip, precisely for the reason that you indicate, because that's a huge DPS increase. I think the intent there is more to have the flexibility to be able to say, I'm going to have my Earthbind Totem and my Tremor Totem down at the same time. I'm going to drop Mana Tide while I have my new Healing Tide Totem also down, as opposed to just, oh sweet, I can drop like Searing and Fire Elemental and Magma all the time, and that gives X percent DPS increase, therefore it's the correct choice any time an Enhancement or Elemental. And for the cooldown one, I think that fun functions essentially as described. I think one of the great frustrations for many shamans with the totem mechanic is either in PvP it gets killed, or in PvE in many situations you need to pick up your totem or replace it before you've gotten the full effect out of it. And this way you can get a bit of a refund on that cost that you've had to pay. Okay, thank you. Good. All right, thanks. Great hand. Hi, so one of the things WoW doesn't have right now is a melee cloth class. And so when you ex um, announced yesterday that we were going to have a monk, I was super excited because we would have something new and unique. And I was wondering if there's any discussion about maybe making them a cloth class more true to the monk feel and flavor. So one of the concerns there is we've had a long-standing problem of having to provide one type of itemization for a single character class, which is the, the most spec, the Holy Paladin gear that has to drop, even though essentially it's to drop it more than their actual Holy Paladins to consume it in order to drop sufficiently. And if we were to introduce a cloth melee user who used agility or strength, we would have the same problem again, where we'd have to have a whole new item drop on all our drop tables that would make, kind of bloat things out a little bit like they were in Burning Crusade, which we really didn't like, and probably you guys didn't really like. So we really want to keep within the existing uh, archetypes of the different types of armor we have. We have, you know, so leather had the spirit and intellect on it, and that seemed like the better place to take them on, especially if we're gonna have them tank so we could have them use the agility leather that the uh, druids do. It just fit a lot better with what the monk needed to have without creating new armor types. Thank you. Hi there. With the announcement that everyone is going to be able to name their non-combat pets, is there any chance that our warlocks can name our demons? And, Greg, I salute you, sir. Yeah. I, I, think the, I think the idea with the warlocks, as distinct from the hunter, is that you don't really have a personal demon that's yours. You're just grabbing a demon for your own use from the Twisting Nether, putting it to work for you, and then disposing of it, sacrificing it, getting rid of it. There isn't the same sentimental attachment that hunters have with their pets, and so naming doesn't seem like it's quite as good a fit. Something we did talk about, <laughs> potentially, is um, sometimes you just get a name for your pet that you just don't like, or it's, or whatever, and what we did talk about, Ian's right that we just don't want you to just customize the name your, you know, your pet John or whatever, but um, we did talk about where you can go to like a, a warlock somewhere, and he'd kill your pet and then give you a new pet, and it'd reset the name of what your pet would be. So, and then you just pay gold for that or something. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Hi guys. Uh, thank you so much for 5.0. It looks great. And I'm probably going to get booed, but I know that removing the minimum range for hunters is a great key for us, but removing the melee means that we're going to lose a lot of stats. How are you planning to balance that within the class? Everybody else loses the same stats in some way. You're, you're, so your current ranged weapon is in a range slot where it has this really gimpy, gimpy, tiny stat budget, and it's like, my, my ranged weapon has as much stats as your relic? What? Your ranged weapon is going to become a two-handed weapon from the point of view of the item budget. So it's going to have as much stats on it as the warrior's two-handed sword has. And then everybody loses their range slot. So really, everyone's going to lose a little bit of stats, but you're not going to lose more stats than everybody else. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, guys. My name is Critter from Malganus for the Horde. Um, quick question. I have two retired tunes. One with jewel crafting, one with inscription. And I feel that, you know, when I put the items on the auction house, they're either quickly outbid or some mass producer from an unnamed country is just going to outpost me like crazy. So I'm asking, can you bring back the old 
you know, perfect cuts, the procs, the rare gems that I could put up so I, as a crafter, can feel like a crafter and people will buy my goods based on the quality, you know? Because right now I feel like they took my job. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I think with the current mods out there, it is, it's a very competitive market, and, uh, you, you know, that's, that's just the nature of an open market. Uh, it, we, you know, talk about perfect gems, uh, if we allowed perfects of blues, uh, then and nobody would use the blues, so it just kind of ups the, the ante on that. Um, you know, that's, I, I don't know that there's an easy solution to making every crafter feel wanted other than things like, you know, daily cooldowns or whatnot, you know, things that you only you can have. Uh, bind down, pick up chaos orbs are another good way. Uh, and, you know, maybe we should do something like that for jewel crafters this time uh, so that, you know, you can say, hey, I spent X amount of time in the world doing something and then so you can pay me for that time and I'm, you know, there's a limited quantity of it, so it's very valuable. Perfect. Thank you. We've got time for about one or two more questions. Come on up. <laughs> How you doing, fellas? Uh, there's a lot to be said for consistency and longevity, and a lot of us play these games because we love to play with our friends, and you've been doing such a good job for so long that now we're getting to play these games with our kids, so thank you. Um, what I wanted to ask is, what I wanted to ask is, I got to play the Monk yesterday, and the play of it feels amazing. With the removal of auto attack, I think it makes everything feel really fluid. Can we expect to see this with other classes? And if so, hunters are gonna be really confused. I definitely, uh, I think removing auto attack on a monk or the monk not having auto attack was just, it was really actually controversial around the office too. And there's fans for it and there's people who think we're eventually gonna, you know, cave and give auto attack back. So we're not even 100% sure the monk will do it. Um, and I think removing auto attack on the other classes is really risky because they have a, you know, they've been playing a class for X number of years and, ch and removing auto attack will just feel like, you know, such a, a huge change, I, d I don't know. Do the crazy things on new stuff, not, not old stuff. One of the downsides of the auto attack that people have found already, the, the monk lack of auto attack is, if you're about to you know, smack that monkey down or something and he only has five health left, you have to wait until you can hit a button again, whereas a warrior rogue would just kill it with their auto attack. So there are some downsides too. Thank you. And for everybody that applauded the druid nerf, haters. No, and I didn't hear that. <laughs> smack the monkey. All right. That's it. I think that's it. Guys, thank you very much for your time. Everybody give them a round of applause. Thank you. Great job. We are going to be doing a, um, a follow-up Q&A on October 27th online. Uh, we'll be able to answer a lot more questions about 5.0 in the classes. Thanks. Class item. Thank you for attending the World of Warcraft. Class items and professions Q&A.